Welcome to Geneva. This is a quick introduction to where you're living for the next four years and what's made Geneva what it is today. Besides answering, why is this the Finger Lakes and why should I care? We want you to understand three important elements of the city's history, agriculture, transportation, and people. About two million years ago, glacial activity eroded existing stream beds and carved deep valleys in this area. The last glacier receded about 20,000 years ago, leaving behind the handprint-like features that we know as the Finger Lakes. The glaciers exposed bedrock hills to the south and left glacial hills, moraines and drumlins, to the north. They also left behind fertile, well-drained soil that is perfect for many types of agriculture. The Lamoka people lived on the northeast corner of Seneca Lake around 4,500 years ago, and the Seneca people settled here around 1350 Common Era. Both groups chose the area for the rich soil and hunting and fishing. In the 1700s, the Seneca Nation had several towns near Geneva. They moved to a new site about every 30 or 40 years, letting the old town return to nature. The last one, number three, was Canada Saga. In 1948, when three Hobart students started a food service company, they looked at a historic map and saw the name Canada Saga, and they chose a shortened version, Saga, as the name of their company. Although now operated by Sodexo, HWS's main dining hall is still named Saga. During the American Revolution, George Washington was concerned the Six Nations, or Haudenosaunee, also known as the Iroquois Confederacy, would fight for the British. In 1779, he sent troops to the Finger Lakes to address the resistance and retaliate against them for their alliance with the British during the American Revolution, even though not all Haudenosaunee people were pro-British. They paid a steep price, and American soldiers marched up Seneca Lake to Canada Saga and destroyed by fire the orchards and crops. In addition to the Seneca people, the other members of the Iroquois Confederacy include the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Tuscarora. The Confederacy's constitution, the Great Law of Peace, or Guyanus Hagawa, is believed to have been a model for the U.S. Constitution, partly because Benjamin Franklin was known to have been much interested in the structure of the Confederacy, and partly because of the balance of power embodied in the Great Law. The monument that marks Canada Saga is 1.5 miles from campus, and Professor Jeffrey Anderson in the Anthropology Department is a great resource for those looking to learn more. After the Revolution, white settlers wanted to move west. A group of investors from Massachusetts negotiated with the Six Nations to buy about a million acres of land in this area. The settlers moved here from the Hudson Valley, Massachusetts, Maryland, and Virginia for the natural resources that were so abundant in the Finger Lakes. Like the rest of the country around 1800, Geneva farmers raised crops and animals for their own needs. Excess production was sold or traded for goods. As the 1800s progressed, farmers grew cash crops on a larger scale. Beginning in the 1840s, orchards of trees and bushes were the first big business in Geneva. English immigrant William Smith and his brothers made a fortune selling plants to settlers in the Western territories. While there were many successful nursery owners, William Smith made a lasting impression on the Geneva community in two important ways. First, in 1895, he was the lead donor for the Smith Opera House on Seneca Street. This architectural and historical treasure was saved from demolition in the 1970s, and you will almost certainly get to know it over your four years here, as Koshari dance performances, lectures, concerts, and assigned films for classes are all hosted by the Smith Opera House. Second, in 1904, William Smith wanted to do something for the education of women. Originally planning to build his own campus, Hobart College President Stewartson convinced him to share Hobart's buildings and faculty. This picture highlights William Smith with the first graduating William Smith College class in 1912. Founders Day brings together students, alumni, faculty, and staff members to celebrate the establishment of William Smith College and the achievements of its students and graduates. By the 1860s, companies were processing local crops for wide distribution, from flour to canned fruits and vegetables. In the mid-20th century, new companies were also preserving frozen foods. 
Larger scale farm work in this area has always depended on immigrants or the working class. 19th century Irish immigrants were replaced on farms by Italians and Syrians in the early 1900s. African American and Latinx immigrants took over more farm work in the later 20th century. In 1882, the New York State Agricultural Experiment Station was founded to apply science to farming. It's developed new types of fruits, like snapdragon and ruby frost apples, and vegetables, and made processed foods safe. Now called Cornell Agritech, they help startups develop new food products like locally sourced oils and snacks. Although Seneca Lake is known for wineries, most weren't established until the 1980s or later. Today, they generate a lot of local jobs, from field workers and growers to wine experts in the tasting rooms to the broader support of the larger local tourism industry, which includes hotels and restaurants. Agriculture is Geneva's past, present, and future, and with continued thoughtful and collaborative stewardship of individuals and communities, the interdependent nature between land and people will remain balanced. HWS offers many ways to learn about protecting the Finger Lakes, such as environmental studies classes, the Finger Lakes Institute, EcoRep's Student Club and other environmentally focused organizations, and other majors and minors that focus on the many disciplines that impact our environment. Native American footpaths wisely avoided glacial hills, and one of the main footpaths was so well situated that it eventually became a stagecoach road from Utica to Buffalo that passed through Geneva. But land wasn't the only option for travel. Water has always been a key mode of transportation in this area. It was possible for the Seneca people to travel by water from Geneva to Lake Ontario, east to the Hudson River, or south to the Susquehanna River. In the 1820s, rivers were turned into canals by installing locks to eliminate waterfalls. Raising or lowering water levels inside locks allowed barges to traverse hilly terrain. The Erie Canal from Buffalo to Albany is, by far, the most well-known of these canals. The Seneca Cayuga Canal connects Geneva to the Erie Canal. Even today, you can still get to the Atlantic or the Mississippi from Seneca Lake. The closest lock is about six miles away on the Seneca Cayuga Canal, and you can ride a bike there on the Cayuga Seneca Canal Trail that begins on the lakefront. The Hobart and William Smith rowing teams know these canals well, as the quieter water makes it ideal for practice. By the 1870s, railroads in the dotted lines supplemented canals in the solid lines, connecting Geneva to the rest of the state and eventually the nation. Access to such good land and water-based transportation made Geneva the place to be for industries. They built right on the lakefront to be close to the harbor and railroad depots. Industry steadily increased through the 1800s into the 1930s along the lakefront and north of downtown. Accordingly, Geneva's population grew and the village became a city in 1896. Due to military facilities near Geneva during World War II and the Korean War, the city became a boom town. It was the closest place for people from the base to go to movies, bars, or dancing. Until the 1950s, Route 20, which was the old Native American footpath, was still the main road across New York State. Traffic went through downtown Geneva and along the lakefront, which is now a bike path. In the early 1950s, the state built a bypass to move traffic around downtown. Several years later, the New York State Thruway opened, diverting more traffic away from Geneva. If you arrived from the east or west, it's likely you took exit 42 off the Thruway. Next time you take a walk down to Seneca Lake, try to imagine the little road next to the lake as the main thoroughfare through Geneva. Over the last 30 years, Geneva has embraced tourism. Being near the Thruway means visitors can get here easily, and the city is centrally located for visiting wineries and exploring the beautiful Finger Lakes. In the 1790s, farmers came to Geneva for the land. Later, an upper class moved here from the Hudson Valley, Maryland, and Virginia. They brought old money and educational resources to the village. By 1836, Geneva began to get a reputation Geneva is rather the place to enjoy than to make a fortune. A more charming retreat for the retired merchants, the student, or the gentleman living on a fixed income can scarcely be selected.
African Americans were among the first residents to settle in this area after it was purchased from the Six Nations. Some were free, while others were enslaved and worked for tradesmen or farm owners. Slavery was legal in New York State until 1827. Beginning in the 1800s, cultural groups were often marked by the churches they established. English immigrants and descendants founded Trinity Episcopal Church on South Main Street. The Scottish began a Presbyterian church on Pulteney Square on South Main Street. The Dutch, who moved from the Hudson Valley, built the Dutch Reformed Church on Main Street, which is now HWS Housing. Irish immigrants formed the first Catholic church on Exchange Street, on what was then the outskirts of town. German immigrants built a church on North Main Street and worshipped in German into the 20th century. The 1890s brought more immigrants, Italians, Syrians, and Jews. Italians began coming to Geneva from Buffalo and other cities to pick crops and work in the canning factories. Syrians moved here from Utica and nearby Manchester. Like Italians, they did whatever work was available at first, before expanding into other service jobs like barbers and shoeshiners. The first Jewish settlers moved here from nearby cities and established businesses. Although they were here since the 1890s, they didn't establish Temple Bethel until the 1940s. The HWS Center for Spiritual Engagement is a wonderful place if you're interested in learning more about or connecting with the variety of faith traditions in the Geneva community. There was a small African-American community that resided in Geneva between the Civil War and World War II. It grew larger in the 1950s as black migrant workers came here to pick crops and eventually stayed. Latinx from numerous countries came to Geneva for agricultural work during World War II. They made up most of the migrant labor in the 1960s and 1970s. Like African-Americans before them, they settled here for year-round jobs. This graphic from Geneva 2030, a local community initiative anchored at HWS and focused on education support from cradle to career, shows Geneva's diverse and growing demographics. This community, where you will live for the next four years, has a rich history bolstered by its fertile land that has supported everything from William Smith's orchard trees to the many people whose work goes into making every bottle of delicious Finger Lakes Riesling wine. The footpath that was carved along the tops of the Finger Lakes is the same path you will hopefully become very familiar with as you enjoy walking, jogging, or biking along the north edge of gorgeous Seneca Lake. And now you will know how important that path and the canal at the northeast edge of Seneca Lake were in connecting Geneva with the rest of the world. Becoming a part of the Geneva community during your time at HWS, you will join so many others who have traveled here to Seneca Lakes shores to find success in education and in life. We encourage you to use this short history of the agriculture, transportation, and people of Geneva to inform your own time spent here and to make your own mark on this community, whether it be by volunteering, research, or study. Thank you for your engagement with this HWS and Geneva Historical Society collaborative welcome to incoming first-year students. Many HWS alumni have sat in your shoes, though perhaps not literally, and they couldn't have imagined the ways in which Geneva would become a part of their lives. As you'll note with the smiling faces on this slide, many chose to remain and have launched businesses, established careers, and have further affirmed important alliances, collaborations, and the reciprocal ties that help HWS colleges and the Geneva community thrive. There are many ways to learn more about the community. You're welcome to visit the website for the Geneva Historical Society or visit them as they are located on South Main Street or the HWS Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning located on the second floor of Trinity Hall. This was a look back at Geneva's history, but Geneva's present begins with you.